Price in Pendleton, Indiana, and joining me today from over in, uh, where are you at today? You in Greenfield or are you in Indianapolis, Tyler? I'm in, I'm in Greenfield now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tyler Goff, uh, uh, he is with Indianapolis Parks Foundation. Is that correct? That's right. Well, it's, uh, it's a partnership between the Parks Foundation, IU Health, and the uh, Parks Department. Indianapolis Parks Department, and all of our food goes to Gleaners, but it's called Indy Urban Acres, but you got the gist of it there. Okay, but more, uh, it's uh, Indy Urban Acres? Uh, That's right, yep, it's an eight-acre organic farm. Uh, we've got an orchard, we've got row crops, we've got a greenhouse now, and 100% uh, of the produce is going to help families in need in the Indianapolis area. Okay, that, well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Um uh, Indy Urban Acres. Now, uh, this is a uh, 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 something similar to what you started here in Pendleton, Indiana, with a community garden. Yep, it's uh, it's actually very similar, except on a, a lot larger scale. Yeah. The community garden in Pendleton. Uh, the whole gist of that is is also to help uh, families that maybe need a little extra help in getting organic, fresh produce, things that are good for them to eat. Um, there we've got uh, 27 plots, 27 different families have come out and garden and, and are donating food. Um, in Indianapolis, we're on eight acres. So uh, last year we did 35,000 pounds. Um, wow. Yeah, wow. It's, wow. we did a, did a lot of food. So it's it's really helping a lot of people. We, we actually harvest six days a week. Um, myself and my team, we actually walk it to the food pantry so we get to see the people um, that we're helping on on a daily basis. Gee, Christmas. So uh, I understand that uh, there was a grant to start this. Is that correct? Yeah, it's um, it's really amazing the the people and the organizations that came together to start this farm. Um, these are these are groups that saw a need in Indianapolis, and instead of sitting back waiting for this to be fixed, they came out and 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 did something themselves. That's uh, IU Health. Um, they gave us a large startup grant to get this going. Um, the Parks Foundation, the Parks Department, it's really a lot of people have come together for this mission of, of helping people. And uh, it really, it makes me proud to, to be involved with, with, with people like that, people that really care about the community. Yeah. Uh, now, more specifically, is the uh, Indy Urban Acres located? Well, we're on the east side. Uh, the address is 7700 East 21st Street. But to put that into perspective, it's uh, pretty close <laughs> to 21st and Shadeland. Okay. Uh, if you are um, downtown and going back to Pendleton and you're taking the highway, if you're going 70 east, you'll actually see it as you go on to 465 North. We're just right right there at the intersection of 465 and 70. But it, it's neat because okay. what this was, it sits behind a neighborhood. Um, okay, okay. This was, this was land that was um, owned by the state and they used this as a staging area for their trucks when they did uh, I-70 construction. Oh, this, okay. Yeah, this piece of land just sat there empty. Uh, it was donated to the parks department. And, um, and now we've kind of reimagined what we can do with this with this vacant land well that sounds pretty cool uh it really does now uh, i got some photos you sent me a few days ago and what i'm looking at you've got some uh, young people out there and uh, perhaps starting to plant some things yeah it, it was really it was the highlight of my summer is, is seeing all of these school-age kids that came out we had over a thousand kids came out uh, took a tour of the farm. Um, we did little workshops with them where they got to actually use the tools that we use on the farm. Um, they got to plant their own vegetables and actually take it home in a, in a, a, a pot, a grow pot. Um, and then they got to eat stuff too. Now these are kids, um, this is mostly inner city kids. Uh, they, a lot of them didn't have any idea where their food came from. Um, so to see see their attitude kind of change almost instantly when they got off the bus and saw this farm was really amazing. And, uh, you know, in trying, trying farm produce, they could go out and they could pick a tomato and they'd eat it right on the spot. And, and we didn't have any kids that, that didn't want to eat it. They all wanted to try it. They were all inquisitive. 
they're all polite. It was, um, it was really amazing to see. And you know, you, the hope is that they'll then think about some of the things that they eat, um, lead, lead healthier lifestyles, but hopefully they'll start growing their own food too. Well, I tell you, it's, uh, I got a, uh, I'm trying to figure out where to put my little avatar up there with you talking so I don't cover you up too much, but I, this uh, this looks like it's really amazing. Now you do a lot uh, with uh, apparently with uh, young kids over there. They didn't have any idea about a garden or or what uh, what it was about or. Well, it's um, what these were were for the most part they were uh, summer campers, indie uh -huh. park summer campers. Okay. So they would um, uh, not only have their regular summer camp at the park, but they you know go on tours of various locations, and we were one of their stops so they could come out and see a farm. And a lot of them had never seen a farm. No um, kidding. Yeah, uh, it, it's uh, uh, a lot of these kids don't have land. You know, maybe they live, um, maybe they rent, maybe they live in apartments, so they don't have an opportunity to maybe plant a garden of their own. But what we actually had was little. Uh, bags they would fill it with dirt and this would be their first chance to actually plant a seed and to water it and um, watch it grow and then eventually by the end of the summer they were eating um, green beans that they had grown themselves uh tyler i got a couple more photos you sent me and again uh you got one here that uh in front of uh Old Bethel Community Outreach, and you've got some wheelbarrows just stuffed with melons, and then I've got yeah. a, got another one here uh, where you uh, just loading uh, super large crates of uh, uh, apparently vegetables on a on a truck. Yep, it's um, yeah. well, like I said, we did thirty five thousand pounds. It's hard really to put that into perspective, but yeah. basically from June to October. Um, we were harvesting hundreds of pounds of produce uh, six days a week. Um, and, and I think the photo, the, the, the one of Old Bethel, that's a, um, a food pantry that we support that's very close to the farm. We can actually walk up there. So when we have volunteer groups, um, it's nice for them to come out. They're giving back to the community. They're working hard. But then they also see the, the end result of that. They're actually taking that food to the food pantry. And, yeah, we, uh, you know, we had so much food we were loading in wheelbarrows, but uh, Gleaners is a great partner for us. Gleaners, we can we can grow food. That's something that we know right, how to right. do. Getting it to uh, families in need, that's Gleaners specialty. That's what they're good at. So that's a great partner for us um, to really get the food to the people that need it in Indianapolis. Well, Tyler, I tell you, I'm, I'm hearing a lot more uh, uh, every day about increased need and uh, uh, some maybe some news about maybe they're getting ready to cut the uh, uh, SNAP program back or reduce that. Uh, yep. and, and they say that SNAP program is supposed to be only, you know, a supplemental thing, but for a lot of people, it does most of uh, what uh, getting what they need for nutrition, doesn't it? Yeah, it's uh, food insecurity is, is not a people aren't hungry because they're hungry. People are hungry because of other issues. They're hungry because they don't have a job. They're hungry because maybe they got sick and can't work. Yeah. There's so many other issues that go into um, food security. But unless you get people food that are hungry, it's hard to fix all those other problems. So what we are doing is we're getting in at the ground floor of, of really helping these people change the way their life is going. And hopefully with full bellies, um, you know, you'll see a lot of a lot of other things improving. And it's not necessarily, George, um, just eating. What, what we're trying to do is get them healthy food. You see um, diabetes rates rising. Okay. You see obesity rates rising. Right. Um, and this is because the, the food that they're putting into their bodies isn't good for them. Um, you're, it's high sodium, high fat. Uh, this produce is, is, is the healthiest stuff that they can eat. So, you know, not only are we trying to feed people, um, but we're trying to heal them in that process. Uh, now, you got another uh, photo you sent me. Now, this is, is pretty interesting. I think this is something you're doing now. There's uh, like a, uh, 
a greenhouse type uh, structure and uh, got some plants in the ground and they're covered too. What's going on there? Well, that's, it is pretty exciting. We've got a uh, 3,000 square foot greenhouse. It's about 100 feet long, 35 feet wide. We are planting uh, right into the ground. We'll expect to have some food um, shortly after the new year. Uh, it's it's pretty neat. It's you know we've basically not only extended our seasons, but now we're going year round. We we just because it's cold outside um, doesn't mean that people don't need produce. We are able still to deliver produce even in the in the freezing cold of winter. So. What you're saying here is that you're going to try to grow vegetables all year round? I'm doing it. I'm not trying. I, I was out there this morning looking at um, spinach and lettuce and radishes and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So it's it's happening. And no kidding. Now, how, how much uh, produce are you going to be able to grow inside uh, in the wintertime here? Well, it's, it's really hard to estimate. Um, and when, you know, I, I was talking about pounds. Pounds, it, it, it's so hard to to really talk about how much food something is in pounds. Uh, what we're going in the greenhouse is um, spinach, lettuce, microgreens, stuff that doesn't weigh very much. But um, as far as servings goes, four ounce serving. Um, okay. Expect to do two, three, four thousand servings. Wow. <laughs> I tell you what, they're going to start calling you the Johnny Appleseed of garden just the way you're going here, man. You started this community garden in Pendleton. Now you're over there doing what you're doing in Indianapolis with uh, uh, Indy Urban Acres. It's amazing, man. Well, remember, what was it, six, seven years ago, me and you walking around uh, the Pendleton Garden with nothing right. and, and, and talking about uh, what we wanted to do and what we wanted to accomplish. Right. And, and part of that and part of Indy Urban Acres um, to use the, the Johnny Appleseed analogy, is we want people to go out and grow their own food. That would be um, just a, a, a tremendous thing to happen if people were going out and growing their own food um, and, and in turn leading healthier lifestyles. I tell you what, it's just amazing. How can uh, folks that uh, don't know about uh, uh, Indy Urban Acres over there. Uh, how can they find out more about what you folks are doing and, and for the community and the uh, uh, local uh, food banks? Well, um, I, the best way to do it, I think, is to get on Facebook and look at our Facebook page. We're okay. Here's Organic Farm. And it's hard for people to picture what this farm in the city looks like. Uh, but we've got hundreds <laughs> of pictures all throughout the year. Um, you can see what it is we do. Um, you can contact us through that. If you'd like to uh, uh, make a phone call to find out more information, call the Indianapolis Parks Department, 317-327-PARK, um, and they can get you all the information. Uh, but we always need volunteers. Um, we, we need people uh, talking about the farm. Um, and any help that people can give us is, is greatly appreciated. Oh, do you have programs over there, uh, uh, like uh, a class-type program that you're talking to people about this, or go out to different, uh, uh, you know, libraries uh, and talk to people from time to time? Yep, we'll um, we'll be adding some classes here in the spring. Uh, we don't have dates, even locations right. set up yet, but we will have uh, gardening classes, cooking classes, uh, things of that nature. Uh, you know, January and February, when the seed catalogs come in the mailboxes, when people start really getting excited about gardening, so we want to take advantage of that and, and let people talk about gardening, maybe learn a few things from us, and um, in turn, uh, maybe come out and even give us a hand. All right, Tyler. Well, I appreciate you you uh, uh, Skyping in with me today and talking to me about uh, in, the, in the Urban Acres and uh, up, uh, on this uh video i'll put some links down below to the facebook page and the phone numbers to uh get a hold of you folks over and find out more about them that'd be great i appreciate it george hey tyra it's a good looking tree back there man thank you my wife did that uh, i didn't have anything to do with it it wouldn't look nearly that good if i did all right well if i don't see you guys before i hope you have a a, a great christmas thanks george i appreciate it you as well okay man well We'll talk to you later. All right.